Mr. As the court please, my lord, with the permission of the court, there's just one aspect that you want to take up with the witness. Just one aspect. Okay. Yes. Brigadier Geninda, you've placed your experience on record. Um, do you have, over and above your experience, do you have other qualifications? Yes, I do, my lord. Teacher qualifications. Yes, can you place them on record? So the first one, my lord, is a, it's a certificate from Technicon SA, it's part of UNISA now, um, <clears throat> for investigation and policing. So second one is a certificate of money laundering with the University of Johannesburg. Um, the third, my lord, um, it's a criminal law diploma in forensic uh, investigations with the University of Johannesburg. The criminal law, uh, it's a criminal law. In forensic investigation. Can you forensic investigation? diploma University as Johannesburg. Then it's also a national diploma uh, in policing with the University of South Africa, UNISA. Can you put a diploma in criminal law? Can you say UNISA? No, I think a UNISA. BTEC degree in policing with University of Johannesburg, my lord. Basic Banayogi BTEC degree. University uh, Johannesburg. And I'm currently feathering my law qualifications, my lord, in LLP with University of Chokov, South Africa as well, my lord. Okay. Thank you, my lord. That is well. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Where's Mr. Mgomizuru? Thank you, my lord. I'm ready to proceed. Yes, yes. <coughs> Mr. Kininda. Yes. This might not be relevant, but uh, I think my first cross examination, when I first cross examined you, it was in 20, 2003. Remember? Sure. Jobe. Yo, I don't remember. That's not relevant, but I just okay. wanted to show you that uh, you are not a new person to me. Okay. No, I, I don't recall my lot. I'm But you know me. Um, we've spoken. I've, I've seen cancer before. Thank you. Say, so what is of relevance? is you are the head of the cold case unit, correct? That is correct, my lord. Okay, so you are the head of the cold case unit. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, my lord. Uh, my lord, uh, Yes, as the national head, my lord. But prior, prior, prior to that, um, we're still doing cold cases, but on a pilot project type of an investigation. Uh, unit then I got the Yakala, the Gotu Gutiminagan, the national head in Kalamo 2021, Napam Lining Jebabu, Sasi Pega, the Ugutige, Uma Isakala, the Uzo Sebenza Ranja. So when it started as a pilot project, <coughs> what, what rank? Were you holding at the time? I was a Kenyan. So in 2020, you were the as you were appointed as the head. Who actually appointed you? It's then is then the National Commissioner General Sitole. Uh, and I was a lot of people who were in the commission of the police and the general city. All right. So, <clears throat> I would say <clears throat> it doesn't specify the duration of your appointment. 
on that particular unit, does it? No, it doesn't. It's not on contractual basis, if, 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 if that's what the question is, is, yes. is made. No, it's not a contract. It's almost like for as long as you're in the service, you'll be the head unless you are removed for some reason. Loko umbuza wana kuguti akushiwa mbuti ngi kwa kwa iskate suna gana nige Aksi uguti kengi kashwe kengi kontrakt Uma nje ngise nga pakati ngema kwa iseni Ngise lako ke isku njanzo spamba ngi Nga pande ngo kuti ngi akishwa ngi Nama kune izato itizwe ngi kishwa ngazo Yes Let's get into the This unit The Objective The primary objective of this cold case unit. You, you, you mentioned one, among other things, is to investigate matters that are cold. Am I right? Yes, it's to investigate matters that are cold. Um, but I also said, my lord, matters that are cold uh, come in different, in different categories. So they are cold because of the time um, it took for those matters you know, um, in other words, the, 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 there's a length period of time where those matters are not solved. So because of that, they are classified as code. That's the first category. Ben Shilo ge uman kaza ge oguti ge le unit le na ge oguti yini ge epe ge ge na oguti ge yebo kupe ba matala oguti ge iskati iskati we ge oguti le lo kala le lo le pasulu le. The second one, my lord, it matters that even if they are registered today, but if it becomes clear that they are clear intentions whether from the suspects or from certain strategic uh, 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 corners, there is an intention to frustrate the investigation and the matter will never see the light of day in court, then that matter is classified as court and then it falls under our mandate. Bese kuti ke okwesibili ke noma ke icala lonake lingabe registered on namuhla ke bese kuyacaca ke ukuthi ke ngandle la ithizwe nje nake noma ke umsolo noma abasolo noma nje ngakwezinye ke inhlaka khona ke nje ukuzama ukuthi ke kuphazanyiswe ke noma kule bazisekeke uphenyo ke kuthi bese bendluliselwa ke thina ke then lastly my lord is matters that are sitting with investigators for a lengthy period of time but still with no results although they are classified as under investigations but ultimately um, you know there's no outcome okay start to get a matala get a penny a year okay as a zanzen is abo abasashi by a penny again what one jena is cut to see the food what i'm looking for penny about okay i'm not me for me like a corner the, the last part, my lord, that I actually forgot is then matters that are brought to the attention of the National Commissioner uh, by members of the public or other state organs, you know, to intervene urgently. Then, as and when they are assigned to us, then we will look into those matters. Ogunye uh, futengi koshiwege uguti, sampege abandu bompaga ati mbuso bazo leta agena mabachelege ukomishna ugutige unekala letize ege se abuwa nikuta agena mbegela pambili kwekala besege le lota lizu nituliseo la kutina Yes, that's, that's, that's basically, those are the categories my lord. Iko na loko. Thank you, sir. The matter, um, firstly, <coughs> after your explanation, relating to the categories of court cases. So I just want to, you to clarify <clears throat> this matter of Senzo Mayor under cast number 636 of 10, 2014. Which category does it fall under? It falls under the category of unsolved matters. It was under investigation and it was, um, it was it, at that time when we brought in, it was unsolved. So it's twofolded, my lord. That is the first part. The second part is that it, it is the National Commission who instructed uh, me to look into the matter. So it was unsolved under investigation, but furthermore, the National Commission said to look into this matter. Okay. So, Mr. Kininda, uh, in relation to the instruction given by the National Commission on the <coughs> 
category uh, <clears throat> as we've explained. We look at firstly the duration of the matter from the date of the incident, from the date of the commission of crime to the date when you were given the instruction to investigate the matter. So probably how many years from the date of the commission of the alleged offence to the date of the instructions given by the National Commission? Well, so one will have to come from 2018 backwards because the matter took place, to, the matter, the incident took place in 2014. So it's almost four years, four to five years when the instruction was given to me to look into the matter. Uma si pega ke manje skati, so kuti ke ise shaka lo ise sense ganin, kani futi ke skata ni sense skati ke uma opomishna ise kreva ke kuti manje uta balolo utase ma kwena, kuti skati ise ngana. Ise shaka lo ise sense ganu 2014. 2018, So, when you were given this mandate, by then it was on a national level. My question is, was there any kind of pressure from the national government in the finalization of this matter of sense of no, I never, I never, I never, there was no pressure, my lord. What was required of us was um, a regular briefing to the family, um, um, which is understandable because they lost someone that they love and they were feeling they were not getting justice. Um, and um, I was eventually um, liaising with AfriForum, which was appointed as the team representing the family. So, so if there's any pressure, I suppose one would call it that, but it wasn't a pressure that was saying, bring the matter to court regardless of the evidence that was there. That's why one looks at the time the matter was given to us in 2018, November 12, to the time when we eventually indict people, it was almost two years later. So it took a lot of time to investigate and put the evidence together before people were indicted. <laughs> My Lanage, Nalo Tabalu, Gobage, Ushi, put instruction in Yabu in National. Utica, Pamako in the Econag, Goba Upega, Iskatige, La Esenga Tola Conage, a instruction given of Commissioner of November 12, 2018, was about 2020 Uma Seguio Vela, Namagio Magi Abandu and Gandolo, Uma Gutazan Alunjaga, Uma Gutin in the Econage, Tinaga Saskum Missan and Nomdeni, Final Gutin Jundeni, Suazi Segan Gobalana, Gabala Segela. In Ghana, we have a lot of people who are in the Afri Forum. We have a lot of people who are in the Afri From 2018, let's just uh, move on in relation to this CAS 636. <clears throat> bear with me. I want to take it case by case so that we get understanding of this court case you need. Now, when you receive instructions in 2021, also when you were appointed in 2021, there were investigations that were undergoing at that, at that time, prior to your appointment, in relation to 636, am I correct? Yes, which were conducted by me. So they were not independent from me. I was simply escalated in the same division, same office, same unit, and that docket was under me, my lord. Yeah, but 2021, I was told that I was going to go to national head. Yes. <laughs> Uh, when was he formally charged 
under cast number 636 of 102840. On the 26th of October 2020. No, 26th is the October 2020. And he made his first appearance on the 27th, my lord, of yeah. October 2020. Uh, October 2020. Okay. So, who charged at case number one? Well, the decision, my lord, came from, as I indicated in, in my evidence, in my evidence in chief. Submissions were made to the DPP in Pretoria, with regard to the evidence that was at my disposal, there was a decision to indict accused number one together with accused two, three, four, and five. Subsequent to that, applications for warrant of arrest were issued. They were arrested, charged, and brought before court. Umele funuwa zigo gutu bani gwa charge ya msolo wa pala ben kazi lege langa pamlin uguti ge la inkanto uguti ge gasa kuntu diselo age. Local Roman Deo meaning one and my information as I see now you obviously la labo ge ago ego ibo naba shushi sa yo eh kwa se tatwa ge ish momo so go ti ge mshola wakala o es bili o es tato o es sinu no es sano o go ti manje ge ba cha jwe ge ila engen za kona ge ish kalo sa yo ge ije i 50 no ma ge i waran to fares eh in wati ge go ti ge wapo shwe ge ba se be bo shwa ba le chwa ge pam dun kanto ba chwe sa ma tala ba le chwa pam dun kanto so in essence my lord there was an indictment from DPP to arraign the accused Alright. Any do you have a copy of the J fifty? The copy of the J fifty is my lord are in the decode docket and they've been disclosed to the defense together with my statement for the application of that warrant. We've disclosed it way back, even before the first matter collapsed, Thank you, my lord. Yeah, I just confirmed if it has been con uh, disclosed to them. We confirm that it has been disclosed. Con con yes. <clears throat> so, my question, Mr. Kininda, relates to the formal charging after the decision has been taken by the DPP. <clears throat> who actually formally charged accused number one? I, I, I don't understand the question, my lord. So right. what I'm saying is, indictment was issued. Application for J50s were applied for and authorized. And on the 26th of October, that is where charges formally were placed on accused number one. That's correct. And that is now the signing of the 16, the 14A, where it reflects that it's been charged now for the murder of Senzo Moimo for the first time. That was 26 October, 2020, and on the 27th, they appeared in court. Uh, now, when the warrants of arrest were executed, because they were executed in different areas, the members who executed the warrants also disposed affidavit for such execution and gave the 14A, the notice, the notice of rights, for each and every accused. Those statements of execution, insofar as accused number one is concerned, was also attached to the docket and disclosed to the defense. It's available in case maybe uh, Mr. Mgomeso is not aware of it. Fortique, umanga ba sego kishwa ge manje ge inwati lezi ge e kunyazi sa nama ezi tiga ba solo ge ababoshwe ge angiti ba boshela ge na wo eza suge ni nama kuma area asuge ni labo ge agwa ku ibona ge ba 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 pa ge ba ba na zoge lezo manje ge fortique na zoe statement nama ama copy ge ama notice of rights la kuba chela kona ge ngamalungel na lobo ku kona ge ku inanya togoto abameli ba na ngokongelo. 
and, and I think, my Lord, maybe to assist, I think Sergeant Mokola would have been the one who executed the warrant for accused number one. No, uh, I don't want to confuse things, Mr. Kinnini. The J50 that I was given in relation to the execution thereof by Sergeant Mkola related to docket 217-03-2019. It does not relate to 636 or 10 of 10, 2014. Do you understand? It? I do understand, but that's exactly what I'm explaining, my lord. That in docket 636 of 10, 2014, that is the matter that is that we are dealing with now, my lord. There were applications for J50s. They were issued. My application statement, together with those J50s, and the people who executed those J50s, a part of the docket, <coughs> copies were made and disclosed to the defense in addition to the Tembisa CAS 217 of 3-2019. So these are two different dockets. What is common is accused number one, but copies were made of both and disclosed. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the evidence of Sergeant Mohola that she <coughs> executed the warrant of arrest. And that? Not, not, three, not 375 or 371. In this case of 636. No, no, no. Mr. <coughs> the other way, just it's the this year. Let's hear Mr. Baloy. Who executed uh, the, the warrant of arrest in respect of uh, accused number one, Lane, in respect of 636 of 10? No, for the Tembisa case, my lord, 2173 of uh, 2018. <laughs> Uh, 2019 exhibit. Um, now the Tembisa case, we don't have a problem. Exhibit TT refers. The problem is the 636. According to you, Brigadier, yes. who executed the warrant of arrest? It's Sergeant Mokola. That's it. That's how I understand the evidence. Mr. <laughs> First time when I heard about a decision that has been taken by the DPP and for the execution of the J50 was when you were leading evidence. That's the first time when I first heard about the J50 issued in respect of a docket under cast number 636 of 10 2014. Then, my lord, I don't know, because like I said, docket was disclosed with my application for those warrants. Those warrants, copies after they were executed, are attached in that docket, form part of the copies that we gave the defense. 14A, notice of rights, with all the accused attached, given to the defense, before this matter commenced, my lord. So, I, I, I mean, I will testify with what we gave. The reason, my lord, <coughs> <coughs> directing this to the court because I <coughs> this is the first time as I've indicated to the witness about the J50 and I did not consult with accused number one and number two in relation to the J50 that was uh, executed in relation to 636. In other words, they were never arrested. They no, no, no. Long in the time. Let's That's not, not what we're saying. Let's not beat about the bush. That's not In what other we're words, saying. accused number one, at least, was never arrested in this case. My Lord, may I, may I just be clarified and be understood mm -hmm. so that the questions that are posing from the court does not seek to, uh, I, don't want, I don't want to put it in a way that I, I am not uh, understood correctly. 
But my question is, I've honestly informed this witness that this is the first time to hear that a J50 under 636 was executed against accused Okay, fine. So now, since it is the first time you hear about it. when I came on board in this trial within the trial, mm. this is the first time after the witness said it has been discovered. Now, I just got the copy. You see it? I did. I, I, I have to consult with the, the, <laughs> the accused to confirm. But what is, no, of, what is of high vital importance is here is that under this J50, Cast number 636. What I wanted to put to the witness is that when it was executed, both accused persons were already arrested. That's what I wanted to put to you. Do you agree? Yeah, but, but remember the arrest, my lord, they were arrested for different matters. So is the situation with the accused number three, four, and five, not only them. So they were in detention for different matters. And so far as the matter that is before court, they were arrested formally, as you asked me the question, formally yes. charged on the 26th of October 2020. But yes. furthermore, my lord, I can indicate that accused two weapons to be the counsel's client brought the bail application, which was obviously, um, uh, uh, it's common cause that it was denied. But in my responding affidavit, the issues of the warrants being issued on them is articulated in my responding affidavit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, the reason for asking about the, the formal charging of accused number one, the instruction is that accused number one says he was formally charged, according to him, in August, a month prior to his, uh, sorry, in August, I would say two months prior to his first appearance in Boxman. No, but that's not true, my lord. As I said, there's a 14A notice of rights were given to him. He signed that 14A to show that he understands what he was being charged for. He signed on the 26th of October 2020, the following day, he made, he, made, he made his first appearance for this matter, my lord. What you are saying in relation to SAP 14A is in line with the instruction of accused number one, who says the SAP 14A was served upon him, not formally charged, not on the day he was charged, was served upon him on the 26th of October, a day preceding to his first appearance. That's not correct. Lord. He seems to be forgetting that on the same day the warrant of arrest was executed. That's the copy I referred to to say it is attached in the docket. We made copies for the defense. There's a warrant of arrest on the 26th of October 2020 that was executed, given to the accused. Uh,
Can I have fresh? Yes, yes, yes. Well, I have, I have a chart sheet here. It says exhibit E E. Date of first appearance. 27, 10, 2020. 20. Accused number one is Sibiya. Number two is in Tanzi. Number three is in Nube. Number four is Mapisa. Number five is in Duli. Is this what you are referring to? That's what I'm referring to. Now. Yeah, let's show the people because it appears I know the case better than some people here. This was. Now, just show cancel also there. Because according to this witness, that tallies with what this witness is saying. Not that there was a, an appearance in August. My Lord. No, no, yeah, we're not arguing. No. My Lord, I'm saying, wait, wait, Mr. Ngozulu, please. Show, let them show you that document and they show the others. Because this is what this witness is saying. My Lord, must I proceed with the cross examination? Yes, yes. But now, if the court is interjecting. No, I'm not interjecting. I'm still coming on the chat sheet, my Lord. I just want to clarify these things because now the court wants to issue. The reason why I'm dwelling on this aspect, this is the first time to hear about the JP. I need to thoroughly consult with accused number one and two to my satisfaction so that I can proceed to cross-examine the witness, especially on the charge sheet. And there are certain parts in the docket where accused number one has just indicated to me that he wants to be shown a part where his thumbprint was uh, uh, placed on the docket. No, no, that, fine. Yes, my lord, can so I... So this court, I, this please? court, wait, wait. This witness is being badgered by you. Saying, he has repeated it four to five. How many times did you say the arrest was on the 26th? Four times in my life. The first yeah. appearance was on the 27th. Yes. I'm not interfering. My I've not. Wait, wait, Mr. Mm -hmm. Gomez, please. Mm -hmm. I've listened to this witness. So I'm saying, where he says the first appearance was on the 27th, this document, which apparently says the first appearance was on the 27th, I have got it. The court has it. So I'm saying they must show it to you and the other counsels. That's all I'm saying. But it's part of my cross-examination. I'm still going on, on, on exhibits. I'm still going on exhibits. Okay, Even fine. Just, just go, to go on, sir. No problem. My, my Lord, I think I, I, I'll request an adjournment because if the court is disturbing my cross-examination, you are taking me out of the line. My no, Lord. no, I can't. May I just stand the matter down until tomorrow? No, no ways. Just continue. Just continue. The court is entitled when there is confusion between the state, the prosecution, if it has a document which contradicts that, contra that contradiction, to say, is this the document you are referring to? That's all I'm saying to this witness. Is this the charge sheet you are referring to when you say the <coughs> warrant of arrest and the charge sheet were simultaneously issued? Yes, correct. That's what this witness is saying. And now I'm told, that's all I'm saying. I can't disturb your cross-examination. We are free to cross-examine as you want. Okay. I'm not even satisfied with the contents of what is in this. Which one? Is. No, no, you can. I haven't gone through them. I still want to check with both accused. These copies are for accused number one and number two. I'm talking about this JV. No, no, fine. You can yes, go on. May I be given an opportunity just to satisfy myself? No, fine. Comments. Go on. Send this. So, perhaps, do you have a, a, a docket with you, Mr. Well, not with me, but it's available. It's, it's, it's within reach. I mean, the state has it. <coughs> not with me, but it's available, the original docket. But, but as I said, my Lord, also, the copies were furnished to the defense. We made hard copies. The defense never read the copies. That's what Mr. Gomezulu says. They never read the copies. I say, he says the copies were furnished to the defense. And I'm saying the defense never read the copies. Because you are saying you want to familiarize yourself with the copies. That's correct. That's it, yeah. Yes. That's all I'm saying. May I request the, this, this kind of questions 
to be stood down until tomorrow. I'll proceed with other questions uh, so that I can familiarize with the documents. Court. With the leave of the court. No, Mr. Mr. just continue with your cross examination. If you want to extend your cross examination to tomorrow, there's no problem. You know, let me tell you normally what happens in a trial. Before counsel stands up and cross examines a witness like this, counsel has prepared, he has read the papers, he has read the charge sheet, he has read everything. That's how I know it's being done. You read everything so that when you cross examine this witness, you're informed of the case you want to present to him and you're informed of the case the state is presenting. Now you, <coughs> Mr. Gomez, you stand up and say, you haven't read these documents. Not and not this me. witness, in contradistinction, tells you what he has done. That's and now good. we are talking at cross purposes. I think you want to postpone the, the cross-examination of this witness with regards to that exigency. You can do so. Yes. But can it be clear, my lord, that mm -hmm. when I came on board, it was for trial within the trial. Yeah. Whatever that has been discovered was for the main trial. And all the witnesses that have testified during trial within the trial has never mentioned a J50 that was uh, issued and executed against accused number two. Uh, all those witnesses have never said that. The first time it was said by uh, Brigadier Gininda. So hence I'm saying, I cannot take it as an ambush for what he has said. This is what he has done. I want clarity from what he has done, which has never been canvassed by either of the witnesses. That's the reason why I want to familiarize myself with this. Okay, continue, Mr. Gomez. No problem. Thank continue. you, Manu. Thank you. Okay, with the leave of the court, I'll just leave it for tomorrow. I appreciate maybe tomorrow you you, you bring along the docket, the docket, Mr. Gomez. Well, yes, I can. The docket, like I said, my lord, it's available. I don't have it here, but it's, 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 it's within the court building. To bring it, um, the original one, yes, I do that. My final My question relating to docket 636 on exhibits that the state has led you on occurrence books, chat sheets, and other related exhibits. But what is of essence in this question relates to the occurrence book. Is there in the occurrence book of respective police stations wherein either accused number one or accused number two was booked in or out under cast number 636? of 10, 2014. Well, one that I remember, my lord, in Albertin, when he was booked in for pointing out, it's clearly reflected that he was booked in for the pointing out under cast 636 of 10, 2014. Uh, 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 Mallo, the accused, uh, as I said earlier, accused one was arrested for a different matter. The warrant of arrest was G50 was executed in relation to the drug dealing case of Tembisa 217 uh, uh, of 3-2019. He was in custody on that matter. So obviously the movement of him, it will relate to that matter until this matter becomes relevant. Uh, Yes. On the same murder charge under a court case,
my worry in terms of the investigations prior to accused one and two, including three, four, and five, appearing for the first time in Boxburg Court. At that stage, there was no direct, I would say, there was no direct evidence linking Sorry, may I rephrase this question? Sorry. I don't want to confuse the months. At the time, Sibia was arrested on the 30th of May, 2020. He was the first person to be arrested. Is that so? He was the first person to be arrested for Tembisa case 217 of 3019. Yes. Yes. But Will you dispute that immediately or at the time of his arrest, he was interviewed <coughs> about the case of Senzo Mayo, 636? No, it's not in dispute, man. But he was also interviewed on other matters where he was also a person of interest. Yeah, let's just focus on this one. I understand they are relevant, those cases, in terms of your investigations. But in relation to 636, on his interrogation or interview regarding the death of Senzo Meiwa. The state at that time had no evidence that linked accused number one with the death of Senzo Meiwa. I, I'm not sure, my lord, if, 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 if we can say that, because what led us to him, there were fingers pointing to him that he was involved in, in, in the killing of Senzo Meiwa, and eventually when we got to him, more evidence was found, and hence we are standing before this court is charged for the killing of Senzo Meiwa. Uh, Mary Otige, Yeboge, Uma, Ese, Tweswe, Lelo, Itala, Gala, Setembis, Kotoage, Uma, Manjege, Se, Nibuzage, Imibuzo, Maila, Nekala, Lelo, Senzo Meiwa, Kwa, Babu, Nge, Kukufara, Zige, Oguti, Uyambanda, Ganyegaage, Upekatiege, Utigafu, Melanige, Nalo, Kongobage, Yaikonage, Iminwe, Eyaikomba, Gye, Nage, Sati uma sifiga kie nage, satola ogunyege ufagazi kuyena, inga hako manje simila kue mkandolo. Now, I understand the logic uh, of your answer, but the question still stands. When he was arrested on the 30th on a J50, let me say, before he was approached by Sergeant Mohola, and Sadike and uh, Buteles. The state had no evidence against him until such time accused number one made the alleged confession. I disagree, my lord. This is what I'm saying. For, 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 for one to focus on a specific individual, mm. there must be basis in the form of a statement or, or intelligence or a source saying this person committed this crime. So you can't just go and question a person when there's no basis for that person being implicated. And give me the name again, I'll go up show you, but if I'm going to fire as it, that was a static, you are going to get, go back, I'm going to get you, but we are going to need to get over so cool, Miss Anna, I get, I'm going to go far as it, no matter what corner, I'm going to get out there, no matter what corner, it's that demand, the water, the corner, the indoor, it's a whole lot of people who want to die. Yes, those are the links towards uh, obtaining what you in, what you are investigating, but what I'm saying, the evidence at that time before his arrest, dependent on the information of the informer. Is that so? No, no, no. It's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, my lord, when you approach someone, you have to have a base, whether it's information from the source or a statement making certain allegations. All that I'm saying is that there was a reason for us to focus 
on Mr. Sibiya. So I'm not saying it's a source, because I'm now getting the impression as if I'm saying there's a source. There's a statement, my lord, in the docket, which we disclosed to the defense again, of Mr. Absalom Zong. It's clearly implicating accused number one and number two in this matter. And yeah. that's what led us to focus on accused number one and two. And she log a local manager said we told her over to me, we're going to get a manager of short, over to get it is in a source, no more of no moon to or our still again. But I ain't sure you're okay, or go to who called Nanji, or go back corner, or go call I, no more information over Nayoga, as a whole of the moon to write, or go to your cooking son and Nayagi, Futigi, Gapinda, Futigi, Nanjaman Shilo, my family, go to Nala Nagi, with the word, the Skonagi statement, the sack, you have some zoom. About me, the ban was, was, so let's start with the vessel. You're not getting 40, or show you're getting one band, and you're going to accuse one and two. Absolutely, uh, Zong, as, as you say, his statement has been discovered. Now, when accused number one was approached, he was not approached with that statement. Do you agree? My Lord, there was a basis. You, you don't approach suspect and show them the statement that person X. I mean, you'll be compromising witnesses and people's lives. Yeah? I mean, that's not how investigation is done. I'm simply saying there was a reason, there was a basis. And I'm mentioning this name because we disclosed the statement. If it wasn't disclosed, I was not even going to mention this name. But I'm simply answering counsel to say there was a base as to why the approach accused one. Because in that statement of this particular person, accused one and two, are implicated as being involved specifically in the killing of Zezo Mayi. Lana, I'm going to tell you about the fact that when you're number one, you're going to get a 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 number one, you're going to get Ye na ge Mr Zungu, ego iso ni statement de aba mele aba be na so na pam go kuti ikala de All right. The basis for this question is <clears throat> will relate to the voluntariness and the element of the accused being free to make a statement. When Constable, or when Sergeant Mohol, after she executed a warrant, ultimately accused number one was arrested. The approach was mainly was mainly on the execution of the warrant. Are you with me there? Because my question is mainly based on the elements that we need to prove under Section 217, freely and voluntarily. Are we, so we're dealing, I suppose, are we now on the confession part? Maybe just to understand, no, no. because I don't call that. No, it's yeah. part of the confession. It's part of the contestation of the 217-1A. Yes. So My question I... is, it, let me just rephrase it in order for us to understand. I'm saying, when the J-50 was executed, on the 30th of May 2020 by Sergeant Mkhula to accuse number one. The sole purpose was at that time hidden in relation to the death of Senzo May to approach accuse number one with the J-50. Well, my lord, I don't know how you hide um, the J-50. The warrant of arrest, no, no, no. when it gets issued, firstly it's signed by the NPA, then it gets signed for the final authorization by the magistrate, and that, that's, that's the procedure. So you have to make your case. So I'm not sure how the yeah. NPA and the magistrate from Tembisa will disregard the facts before the main heights and the main, I don't know. So, so I think, um, Mr. just to interject, sir, so I wanted to, before you can interpret it, I wanted to clarify the question. Yes. I was saying the sole purpose of executing a J50 has been executed by Sergeant Mohola, Mohola to accuse number one. That's the purpose of the J50. 
I'm answering the dialogue. Yes. So, so first I was now I'm saying yes. when she executed the J warrant, when she the, the, the J fifty warrant of arrest, she already had a prior knowledge of the of how accused number one is linked with the death of Senzo Miyu. That's prior knowledge I'm talking about. Which is not a crime, my lord. So Sergeant Mokola is, is, is part of the investigation team. And I've indicated, my lord, that when this affidavit was disposed, we seized with the docket. And suddenly we get a link that points us to two individuals. Analysis around these individuals were done in these cases in relation to accused number one were picked up. Tembisa case, and it's not the only case. There is Fosora's cases where he was officially tried and finalized with the conviction, my lord. So when he was approached on the Tembisa matter, this was not the only warrant. There was a warrant of arrest uh, insofar as the, Tem the Fosora's case where he shot a, a female officer there. I don't mean to defame, I'm just trying to show that this was not the only case. So to say there was a hidden agenda, there was another warrant that was existing, and eventually after arraigning him on the Temesa matter, the first arrest matter was then executed, he was tried, finalized with the conviction. So there was no hidden agenda, and that is before the matter before this court. Furthermore, Lord, to assist on that because counsel referred to section 217. Sergeant Mokola, by the virtue of her rank, she's not a commissioned officer and therefore not the justice of the peace. So she could not. I can't put it into that category. Perhaps that will apply when you speak to officers. Mm. Uh, section 217. Go to school. That's why Anna saw it. Ima kwa sisi usaje mukula ge. Abu mbegi ge logo bi la kutoa kona ge. Ama officers ge a I was not relating 217 with section four. She's a surgeon. I'm well aware that she cannot take a confession. But for the first time, when she gave evidence that accused number one said something in relation to the death of Senzomi, it was at the time she executed a J-50 of the of 217-03-2019. That's the first time Sergeant Mkula uh, said to this court that accused number one said something like an admission but she was well aware that she cannot take this other than informing Brigadier Kininda. Do you agree with me? I agree with that. Uh, uma uh, uma Wabe esesho indoge yenage ubukula ase uifugisela ge buki ninda ge buti Waba yenage enga vumelegilege uguti logo anga tata no mage anga kwala pants Wase uifugisela ge no prekatieki ninda So let's move on Section after the execution of the of the J50 A warrant was effected uh, Sorry, an arrest was effected on accused number one And he was then taken to first lawyers I just want to understand the reason. Maybe that has been complicated with you. What could be the reason for taking accused number one to force lawyers? Yes, so my lord, I think in my evidence in chief, I covered the expert no. that said, I was informed they are moving to force us to do other investigations when I was informed about these uh, admissions. Mm -hmm. I then requested them to meet me outside Kosla's police station because they were on their way on investigation in relation to abuse number one. That's how we find ourselves outside the police station in Fosterest. <laughs> 
Bassentele Nigi, Eyakon, a phosphorus, Bayo Gwenza, Upen, Nassan Batala, Ubutiki, as Sanga Nigi, you are not a police station as a phosphorus. The reason why I'm, I'm asking this, uh, uh, Mr. Kininda, or Precatia Kininda, is that Sergeant Mkhol told the court that after they found, allegedly found, the ammunition in his shack. They then, accused number one, directed them to a hostel in Vosumus. The purpose was to retrieve a firearm, or was to investigate if there was a firearm that accused number one might be. I'm not sure what, what to say, my daughter. All right, let me say, after he was arrested and after the ammunition was found in his shack, then they took accused number one to a hostel to look for a firearm. Well, my lord, I think Sergeant Mokola can best deal with those matters. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, she, she was there, she questioned the accused, they know what they did. Um, yes. I think she'll be in a better position to deal with those issues. Mm. And going to, so, oh, I thought the court is. Ah, me, me. If I want to talk, I'll talk. No, no. I hate the court. No, no. It's a funny sound. You hear me when I want to talk, Mr. Gomez? Yes. The purpose for going to to Fos Loras. It was not <coughs> to do further investigations according to your evidence, which is compared to the evidence of Sergeant Mkhol. No, but but I... was to look for the firearm <coughs> in one of the hostels in Fos Loras. Well, my lord, if, that's, if, if that, is, that is what Sergeant Mukula, Mukula said, that's investigation. If you go and look, if police officers embark on any search on the official capacity, that falls under investigation. Oh, is, so we are saying the same thing. Now I understand the meaning of investigation. And I don't want to be distorted in relation to the definition. My, my, my concern is that when he was taken to Fosloras, was to investigate other cases, which is new from what Sergeant Mukhola said. Sergeant Mukhola said, as they were preparing to go to Fosloras, they received a call to say they must wait for you in Fosloras police station. As a good business, that is not yeah, entirely correct. Yeah, that's what the correct. evidence, we all know that. No, no. It is. I'll, I'll support it. I'll support it. Because I'll take you from what, what uh, uh, Constable Butelis said first, before you get the logic of what I'm talking about. Constable Butelis said they phoned Munareng to wait for them so that they wanted a backup to go to the hostel. That's what uh, uh, Constable Butelis said. To do what in, 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 in the hostel. Now, what Sergeant Mohola said, and sorry, me, let me finish the evidence of Sergeant uh, Constable Butelis. Constable Butelis said, when they were still at Tembisa, he called Munareng for a backup so that they can go to one of the hostels in Fos Loras. Do you understand, sir? I do understand, I'm listening. When they arrived in Fos Loras, the, 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 the escort assisted them to the hostel where Sergeant Mohola and accused 
number one, entered the hostel under their guide. My Lord, mm -hmm. uh, that is yeah, not correct. It's the other way around. That's how I understand the evidence. Otherwise, we just, that's how I understand the evidence. After Sergeant Mokola says they found that ammunition, yes. His uh, evidence is accused number one is the one who led us to a hostel where he said to us, We will find the firearm in Tembisa. Yeah, right. Yes. And just before they went to that place, it's when she says she had a tete a tete with accused number one, who informed her of certain admissions. And she says she excoriated her. Why didn't you tell us this before you were arrested now? You should have told us. No, yes. I knew one day I'll account. Yes. Then she, because as you rightly say, she's not a 217 officer, mm. phones the brigadier mm. to say, hey, she's number one has just made certain admissions to me. I think you must come and consult with him. Yes. And that's when they stop going to, to the hostel to look for the firearm because he instructs them, come to the police station and force Luras. That's how I get the evidence. That's correct, my lord. It's the same oh. I heard. Okay. But now I was relating the evidence of Constable Butelis. Okay, fine. Because it came first mm -hmm. before the evidence of Sergeant Mbola. Okay. Because according to the evidence of Butelis, mm -hmm. they ended up in Force Luras. In first Loras, the discrepancy is that Constable Butelis uh, uh, led evidence which uh, 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 landed them in one of the first in the hostels in first Loras. That's the difference between his evidence and the evidence of Sergeant Mkhol. My Lord, I was, not, I was not in court when they testified. What I'm saying is when I was told by Sergeant Mkhol that accused one is making some admissions mm. and they were on their way to force the rest for investigation. I then said to not, not to step, you know, the route that they were taking. Let us meet at Phosphorus SAPS. That's how we found each other there with the number one. Lana get open the guy, but you might get on the whole of the television gets on Fagazig, Nanga, Nanga, Kogan, Kanto, and Baza Babush. What I mean, show you, Oboti. Mankumisan and I go such a Mokula and Jelagi Oboti, Ukonagi Oktize, Obukunyagi, Vienna, and Solo Wokal. Basang Jelagi Oboti Babi Saint Eleni, Aya, a first lotus, Babi Saint Gitiga, Anga Paza Missige, in the Layabo Namala by a corner, Masang Gitiga, a slang and unicorn, the police station, as a first lotus. I understand everyone. Constable Butelis explained the rights to accuse number one. Sergeant Mohola explained the rights, constitutional rights. When you arrived, when you had the chance to speak to accused number one, you further explained the rights to accused number one. Manor, I, I don't, um, perhaps it's not put into the correct context to say further. I was not there when those rights were given. I, I, as the person who was going to question him, in relation to this matter, I'm aware of the rights that they must be aware, that they must take note of in terms of the constitution. So I explained them to him for the first time. Thank you. Eh, uh, example, ge oguti ge babese wa isiwa tazele ge abanyo kutelezi eh omukola oguti nami ge ngase nkubeka ge example ge aksiona ge nje le oguti maisha ge le mina wa kuwa kala ge mina oguti ngamzo kuluma na ye ge kuluma maela na le kala ge. So I'm going to the And I'm not saying my Lord there were no rights that we gave him. I'm saying to me, because I was encountering the accused for the first time. It's a procedure. That's how you cannot just ask someone in relation to um, an investigation that possibly makes that person a suspect or a person of interest without questioning them of their personal rights. That's that's not how we stand. And you show your Ubuti Gabbe and Tazela, Agalaba, I could miss an above my family big, but I'm Kuluman Gami, the man putting arms of Kuluman Ayege. I was a good to be a Kuluman General Munduge, Sapu Kuluman Aye, Namus of Kuluman Ayege, Indo, Enga Menza, Ubuti, Abe Umsola, Ubese Umam Tazelig, and Malonga, Asionaga, Injela, Egwin Zuanga. My question, if I use the word 
further, meaning Constable Teles explained the rights, Buhola explained the rights, and such rights were further explained by you to accuse number one. That's how I wanted to put it. But there is evidence, as we have led it in examination chief, that you read and explained the rights of the constitutional rights of accuse number one in relation to the alleged admissions he has made at the police station in Fort Um Yes, I've, 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 I'm not sure if I said I read, I didn't use the word. No, 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 you can delete it if you want to, yeah. but you explained it. Yes, yes. It's a matter said, of how and you... And I've mentioned them, what rights did I give him? That's, yes, that's I'm I getting said, into the rights. Reading them. Yes, yes. 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 Uh, that's correct. The same thing about what you get. You are explaining the rights to accuse number one at First Lawrence Police Station. Firstly, I would say amongst the rights that you have explained, a right to remain silent. Yes, amongst them. A right, a right <coughs> against self-incrimination. Correct, my lord. Na longe lao kwa boti kwa umapulumi into hizo faragi na ma esho boti kuyambanda kanya kwa. The rights or consequences of not remaining silent. Yes, that if 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 he does decide to say something that is incriminating, it can be used against him. That is correct, my lord. The right to legal representative, if you don't have your own, you can uh, get a, a state lawyer. If Correct, I put it Correct. Uh, and to challenge any irregularities? Well, first, the, the, the first one, my lord, was the right for him to be detained in an environment that is suitable with human habitation. It's one of the rights. Sorry? Yes, yes. And then, and then of course, the right to challenge the legality of his arrest. And if he feels that it's unjust, um, that he should be released with immediate effect. Did you explain the right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty? My Lord, I, th I think we're not in a trial, uh, with, with due respect. Um, I, I didn't explain that right, I didn't think it was significant. At that time, he needed to know those rights that are given, that I've given him, and then indicate what he wants to do. For example, my Lord, he could have said, I want an attorney. That would have been the end of the discussion. We're not dealing with the trial issues. Uh, so and, and my lord, I think those rights are clearly defined in section 35. You have a right of an accused person, a right of an arrested person, and a right of a detained person. There's a difference. When a person appears before court, he's an accused person. The court will warn that person differently than what the police will do when they're arresting him for the first time on the street. 
Footage of more better than my longer than Nagy, who are my longer than us to get in the land Nagy, or was it good to a sang and Nisege, Conagi, Lomun to get over Shire Mutu own solar or Pangan Candolo, no moon to get footy over the leg, or my own to get a Pangan Candolo, oh, Manga Lela, in Cantolo, your Nagy, Iso, Mepais and Angela, Sugile, Nanjang Angela, Ipoisa, Omadin Bopis, that in the Munto, Elison Pais and Apollo. So I tell you in the court that the right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty is a right explained during the course of the trial? No, I'm saying for the purpose of the interview, we were not during the trial process. The purpose of what is it that he elects to do at that moment to take the investigation forward, those were the rights, my Lord, that were relevant. Because if he had said to me, I want an attorney, be it private or state, then you stop and proceed with those issues. If he says to me, like he said, no, I'm comfortable, I don't need an attorney, and then I need to speak to you, knowing the consequences, of, of, of his responses and that he was making such concession to a commissioned officer who is regarded also as, as a justice of the peace. You proceed. You cannot say now the trial issues must come in effect. You are not there, my lord. It's a stage that comes later. It's a process. So you don't just, that's, that's what counsel is asking me. It's a further stage. At that stage is the ground part. That's where you start. La Mary and Goza Ponage, Uma Manja, Sesia, Ambi League, Uma Begu, go to a Shiloh, get me now, go to Kaufman, maybe, Nanga, get to Beg, get the Sasses of Hela, a Pona Lap, Otta Manja, Ubutin, Jacob Kaze, Lama Lumber Lawa, Abbey, a Kova, Genab, Nomia Ketagi, Ubuti, Office of Wenza, Ranja, Nomutinige, Otta Gangela, and Mutikam Funu, maybe, Fortige, with Missel, Gutige, Akulu Mege, Nam. I understand the way you put it. A right to to be presumed innocent in anticipation, say for, like for instance, accused number one, he made some sort of admissions which may have resulted in a confession of some sort. Do I understand? He made a confession. I, I, the elements of the crime were all in there in what he told me, my Lord. I, 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 I'm not sure if you say so. no, no. I, I, I viewed what he was telling me as a confession. The logo on Chela Gona Minagi, Wabu Pon, Lugagi, Baba Gonke, Ginger, Oma, and the Mokpatan and Palagi, Wabu Pon, Leandro, our young Chela Yon. Yes. If you are comfortable or you precisely understood the meaning of a confession and its requirements, if the elements of the particular offense were explained or were coughed out by accused number one. That's when it came to your, for you to make a decision that this is a confession. Hence, you had to call a person capable of taking a confession. Is that so? That is correct. Wait, can you go to the Google in Chelabonage? Best manje ngezo abu kuti yini ge manje lena the confession ni ukoni loga ukufuma ila manje sen tatu smo mo kona abu kuti manje amfonya lego muntu ozom siza go go kwenza kona lo. A person with such a wide experience in investigating cases, background of the law, there are certain things that to guard against when a person is making a confession. Do you know that? Um, I suppose the violation of their rights, my lord, which I think I guarded against that. I'm not sure what cancer perhaps wants to say. And as you go to any of the Afuna Ubi Show in Babaga Yeva, Uma Ubu, go to Montreal Pulu, who connects into Fanelli Beg, any other party of Malunga or Ak. My lord, with your leave, may I refer a witness in relation to my cross examination to a particular provision? In, yes. the, in the criminal procedure. Can you please read section 219 for me? 219. <clears throat> <clears throat> it 
the highlighted part? Yes, I believe so. All of it? No, no, no. Just, I think, section 2191. So it says... Evidence of any admission made extra judicially by any person in relation to the commission of an offence shall, if such admission does not constitute a confession of that offence and is proved to have been voluntarily made by that person, be admissible in evidence against, against him in a criminal proceedings relate, relating to that offence, provided that where the admission is made to a magistrate and reduced to writing by him or is confirmed and reduced in writing in the presence of a magistrate, the admission shall upon the mere production um, at the proceedings in question of the document in which the admission is contained. That's, that's what it is. Yes. Uh, it's something I missed. It didn't refer to that. So are you not reading section 219, uh, capital letter A? Well, I'm, you said 219. I said 219, That's what I'm reading. It's 219, capital letter May I see that? I'm, I'm not referring to section 219, capital letter A. No, one. I'm yes. Reading. 219, one. one. Yes, that's yes. the one I'm reading. It, it relates to the magistrate. Um, yeah, it's, it's a different grouping with the justice of the peace, my lord. Yeah, all right. It is 219, one. Yeah, it's 219. No. See, it's... 219. Section okay. 21. Can you check section 219 there? Can I ask my lord that the concept to just have yeah, it? Yeah, you're yeah. right. Mr. Gomez will read it for you. Uh, can ask you Mr. Junior to read, yeah, read so that? Yes. It. Because the witness says he has read what you said he must read. Mm. Now we are saying no. Read 219. Okay. There's a difference. There's a section 219 and a 219 capital A. I think what Mr. Gomez will want. Uh, the witness to read is 219, which reads, no confession made by any person shall be an admission in evidence against another person. I'm not sure that's the section yes. that you wanted to read. And by the way, my Lord, I'm not a junior. I was admitted before him. <laughs> you when I when I use junior, I don't use it in terms of uh, admission status. I use it in terms of appearing in this court. He is leading you. You may be senior, but he's leading you. Oh, yes, yes. Yes. Mr. am I correctly interpreting the status? In that context, my lord is my senior here. <laughs> okay, they're fine, but let's be serious. Yes, but is that the correct section you, you want this witness that's correct. to answer on? I'm relating to that section. Let's repeat it so yes. that. Just repeat it so that you get to it. Uh, it's section 219, and it, the title is Confession Not Admissible Against Another, and it reads. No, no confession made by any person shall be admissible in evidence against another person. Okay, <coughs> that's what. Okay, fine. You, you, you heard that. Sir. I've heard. I've heard my notes. Now you understood what was right. My question is: at the time when accused number one was making a so-called confession, I'm less concerned about the contents of what he related to you. Were you aware of this provision? I was aware, but my lord, this, 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 that provision does not talk about things that you must be cautioned of before. It talks about the confession made by one person that it cannot be used to another person. The only thing that I'm aware of is that the person <coughs> must be aware of his constitutional right and make a selection of what, what, what he wants to do before admissions or confessions can be taken. 
Now that section simply tells you that you can't use the confession of person A on, on, on person B if they are both suspects. That's that's the essence of what was mentioned. Mm -hmm. We which is completely different in relation to the requirements for the admissibility of the confession by law. That it must be made free voluntarily without any undue influence. That that's a complete there's a difference my lord. Now, please just focus on section 219. Why am I concerned about section 219? For you to make a decision at that time when accused number two, number one, told you you made a decision to call a competent somebody to take a confession. Having heard the contents of what he told you, you made a decision, a spontaneous decision, to call a person that can assist with the taking of the confession. Yes, that's how, that's how the best practice, my lord, is done. I could have taken it myself, but it's normally preferred that someone independent should take such, such writing. It's, 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 um, it's that, that's how the best practice, uh, that's how things are done all over the country. And, and my lord, I was not so. So, what perhaps must be clear there was no confession that was being used against accused number one. He was making confessions, and arrangements were made for that confession to be taken down. So, we're, we're dealing with one confession, there's no other confession except the one he made to me, and subsequently, she chose in writing to Colonel Mboto. Brigadier I what you are answering me is not relating to the decision you took when after you listened to accused number one. You're not relating to that. I'm talking about the decision. You listen to the contents. Firstly, you guard against the rights not to be violated. That's all. Is that so? Yes, and I did. Yes. I did, I did, number two. His rights, my Lord. Number two, I'm concerned about if you know what are the elements or the requirement of section 219. My Lord, the section that was read to me says you can't use a confession made by person A on person B. That's, that's the no, essence no, no. of what was read to me, my Lord. I'm not confused. I'm not confused. I'm still on section 219. I'm going to argue on section 219 based on what is the source of the, the first person you received the information from accused number one, which necessitated you to take this person to a relevant person who can make who can take a confession from accused number one. There are safety measures that are provided by section 219 to say it that confession, if it comes to your attention being a brigadier, to say what he is telling me is also involving other people in that confession. Do you understand that? I understand, but I don't agree with the assertion counsel is telling me. My understanding of that provision, my lord, it simply says that confession can only be used insofar as the person who made the confession. You can't spread it to accused number two, three, four, and five. That is the assertion. That is the essence of that project. In other words, you collect that evidence, that person is confessing, you will deal with that evidence if the court admits it insofar as that person who made the confession. Not that you can't listen to it. Uh, 
ukuthi yebo lomuntanga kuluma uyayenza ke confession kodwa ke isetshenziswa kuyena phela ayisetshenziswa ku number 2 ku number 3 ku number 4 ku number 5 kodwa ke uma sekuyi ukuthi manje inkantolo yavuma ukuthi ilaleleke ila izosetshenziswa kuyena that aspect I'll converse it my lord i think it's appropriate time to what's the time now it's half past 3 half past 3 yes yeah your last question was i'll converse it tomorrow and i'll give you for argument later so the church it is are you available on home so tomorrow yes i am i am okay okay we are general team tomorrow uh, that's it Thank you.